Welcome to the We've Got a Problem podcast, where each week we explore inspiring stories of struggle, success, and solutions to prevalent problems, and how our guests have turned problems into opportunities. Today I'm joined by Laura Zakowski. She's an entrepreneur, former attorney, the mother of four kids, and the author of We're Not Here for the Hockey, A Guide to Raising a Competitive Athlete Without Going Nucking Futs. Laura, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Glad to have you. So, I mean, we, we, we've we talked a little bit, but I want to get some background. What, uh, how, how did you come to write this book? You've obviously got stories, but what brought you here? Give us a little backstory. Well, it was cathartic at first because like most people that parent kids that like sports, you kind of aren't really prepared for anything that goes beyond just the rec league. <laughs> and I found myself waking up at 4.30 in the morning to drive my son to private hockey lessons. And that was a key sign that things were gonna get a little more serious. And so I brought my laptop with me just to sort of have something to do while I was sitting in the bleachers. Uh, Nothing was open, not even Starbucks at that time. So I would just sit in the bleachers and sort of put down my thoughts. And um, as the season would go forward, I realized that there were things going on in my head that really shouldn't come out of my mouth. And so it became more of a cathartic thing. And as you meet people and you travel and you go to different tournaments and you see all the characters and shenanigans that goes on, uh, you start to put some things down that maybe would be good for a book. And I think that's what happened. I was in this little writing group of women and everyone said, you know, they had a story to tell. And I truly believe anyone can write a book. Everyone's got stories, but you just have to do it. And for, I kept saying, I just write a book about that. And then for, I did. For, I for sure. For sure. I mean, that's, and that's what, what I tell everybody. And I work in the film business. That's my day job. So anybody who comes in and goes, Hey, I've got a story. Will you guys write it? Or will you do this? You go, you are the best person to tell your story. Anybody can right. do it. And they go, no, I can't. I'm not a, I'm not a writer. You go, the way you're talking to me right now tells me that you can spin a phrase as good as anybody else. Maybe not as well as Mark Twain, but as good as most people out there, you can do this. You've got it. You're, you're, you're able to do it. Now you decided to write this book. You'd been writing. Okay. So this had been going on for some, some time. You'd, you'd kind of to started to formulate this, but what led you to, to the lowly stage of being at private hockey lessons. How did you get there? Why? Tell me more. Oh, it is insidious the way it works out. Um, You start out, and I use this metaphor in the book, that hockey is like planting a juniper plant. And the nice thing about a juniper plant is it fills spaces and landscaping, but it's awful because the roots grow down and out 10 feet either way, and it kills off everything else. And next thing you know, something that sounded like a good idea to just fill some time in the summer, (laughs) get the kid outside, okay, it's hot, let's go indoors to hockey. One thing leads to another, and you start to notice that the kid becomes obsessed. And once that obsession hits, meaning with the sport, you're just patting yourself on the back that, hey, they're not sitting on their phones or playing video games. They're actually physically active. So it's, you know, it kind of has this self, um, I don't know, type of congratulatory period. Yeah. And then in order to go to the next level, the kid wants to play with kids that are just as obsessed as he or she is. And next thing you know, you're springing for private lessons and waking up <laughs> at ungodly hours, dark 30, I called it, you know, you're home before anyone else in the house has woken up yet. Right. That's how early it is. Right, right. It's that it's so early that you've gone out and done something before they've even gotten out of bed. You're ready for dinner by noon. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so so obviously this that's a little bit of a trial tribulation, uh, a little bit of a trying time when those things are happening, right? You want to be supportive. You want to be right. great. I'm 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 there for you. I'm glad you've got a passion. I want to nourish your passion, but at the same time, there is some balance there of what do you do for your kids and how far do you go and how much money do you spend? Because I can imagine, and and I, I don't know whether whether your other three kids were as involved in, in competitive athletics or whether you've been just 
glutton for punishment. You 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 didn't nip that in the bud with the other three. But I, what I'm wondering is, how do you go through the process of even paying for all this stuff? Yeah, so you you, you want to do it, but what? I mean, this this is we're talking serious expense here. Yes, uh, hockey, like many competitive slash travel sports. Uh, really is kind of betting the family farm. And it's not so much that you don't want to do it. It's just you have to be a little resourceful and creative. And I did a little case study by joining a Hockey Mom Facebook group. And I actually posed that question. People were selling their plasma. People <laughs> were had executive jobs where they were paid well in their positions and then staying late to clean the office building for the extra cash. Um, I personally, and I don't know if this is advisable now with interest rates, but in 2017, I took out a HELOC against our house and I bought trailer homes in Oklahoma, which is not where I live. I live in Colorado and did a rent to own situation. And there's a whole chapter on how you have to sometimes solve problems. And um, that in and of itself is a book that I would like to write, but the getting back to your question on how people uh, afford it. Yeah, there's a lot of side hustles. There's a lot of people that have to um, give up family vacations, maybe some selling things that they own, like downgrading their car payment to afford the hockey stick. That's upwards of 250 to $300 and those kids break them on a right. bi-monthly sometimes basis and they're never during the warranty period. <laughs> um, and then, you know, just the team fees, the travel fees. Um, yeah. If you look at it, it's the equivalent of one year of um, college tuition sometimes. Okay. Yeah. No, no, thanks. Don't not interested. The, right. the, 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 that's, I mean, I, I so I have lots of questions. I mean, and I, I, I there are questions about bigger and, and deeper things because part of it is where's the where's the balance? Why why go to such great lengths at all? Like, great, you've got a passion. That's nice. This is not sustainable. This is not a tenable situation for us. How much are we going to support you in this? Yes, I, I give you my emotional and my mental support, and I will drive you to to places. But as far as Paying these kinds of fees, doing doing these kinds of things, when it becomes a year of college tuition, that level mm-hmm. stuff, you start to, I'm sure, right, start to ask yourself these questions like, okay, sure. I, 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 how much am I bending over backwards for something that realistically, statistically, they have a low probability of finding the success that would make this this worthwhile, right? I, I, I they're n- they're not going to become, I don't know. Pick 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 a well known hockey player Wayne Gretzky or whatever they're not going to be that level. Chances are just just statistically, right. but of course you don't want to you certainly don't want to turn away from those things and 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 possibly have the next great hockey star uh, not get the encouragement and the nourishment and 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 all that stuff. Right. But I, I, this is the where the balance oh, comes in. You, you are so, you are you are speaking as much uh, clear-headed, logic, um, smart, those are all comments that are fair. Um, In fact, those were the exact sentiments expressed by the YMCA rec league that we left to go to the next level. Um, Many of the parents were exactly saying those things. Um, But I think something happens, and I don't know where your judgment gets clouded as a parent, Uh, But I I think it's a combination of just seeing someone that is acting on something that maybe you perhaps never did pursue your dreams. And I don't know if it's a reflection of your own psyche, like, go for it, kid, you got it, versus um, you just get swept up in in the the drug that you're, you're sort of taking unwittingly that your kid might actually have a chance. And it's not so much the pros, it's just sometimes getting into college and then you start making justifications like, well, I spent the money now, but then later he'll go for free because he'll have a college scholarship. Right. There's that, that, that push and pull with, with how much you, you, you push. And I, like you say, trying to rectify an injustice or, or, or some, missed opportunity in in your past as a parent going I, I i should have whatever learned an instrument or or been more 
uh, focused on sports or academics or whatever the the, the thing was when, that 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 we try and and help our kids to to not make the same mistakes that we did. Let's say there's a lot of craziness in this, and and you've written a book about kind of how to keep your sanity. What is the secret to keeping your sanity through through all these things? Tell me everything. What it? I mean, people are going to have to buy the book, obviously, but. Right. I mean, there's 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 chock full of, of humorous stories. I have this pipe dream that Tina Fey would play me in a movie version of this book. Uh, maybe Steve Carell would be one of the crazy parents who coincidentally played hockey in his youth. But I would suggest that there's more to it than just the finances and the risks and the crazy making that happens in the parent brain. Um, honestly, seeing the kids that my son played with some are still living the dream so some still have the nhl in their funnel Mm -hmm. of you can see the light it's a possibility others are going to college others are still playing juniors those that have stepped back and have gone to college are equipped for college they are uh very good at managing their time because they had to manage a sport that was 30 plus hours a week demanding while they were in high school (laughs) <laughs> they also have the ability to uh, keep up their nutrition and their fitness. Yeah. Uh, they're sound headed. They just make good decisions in general. I mean, there is a lot of humor around hockey players. They are sometimes one step above dogs. So I don't want to give them too much credit, but I do think that they have a um, really good way of sort of knowing what it takes to be, to have perseverance and grit. So yeah. as people, I think that they actually end up being really uh, the next group of leaders. They don't look at things. They don't. They don't get hurt very easily. Um, <laughs> well, they've been through it. They, 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 they've been through it. They've they've done that already. They've they've yeah. I, they yes. uh, you know mentally, emotionally, physically, they have been through the gauntlet. Hell. When yes. right when when it when it comes to a lot of these things. So yeah. Yeah, I can absolutely see that, and and of course, the title of the book is "We're Not Here for the Hockey." Here for the so, hockey. No, you're the parent is the one that's falling apart. Honestly, the kids are fine. I mean, yeah, they have those days where their heads are hung low. They look like they're ready to quit, and then they get up in the morning and they go back to the ice and they hit it again. And when their time is up, they know that they don't need us to tell them that. Maybe we're sounding boards, but really my whole purpose, or I guess offering for this book, like why a parent would need to read it is more for just the camaraderie of it is that, yeah, you're going to go through a lot, whether that's selling your plasma, flipping trailer homes, creating a business on the side to help pay for things. Yeah. Those are sacrifices, but there's also this commiseration that you need, I think, as a parent. And my whole stick, I guess, is the humor. If you can't laugh at it and you can't look at just the ridiculousness of this is a business (laughs) at the end of the day, business. And you cannot, you know, get sucked up in the, you know, watching uh, Rudy or Seabiscuit and go, yeah, I feel good about it now because you'll get crushed if you if you think that it's all just sunshine and butterflies. But right. honestly, it it runs its course. I couldn't say to anyone, "Don't do it." Um, I don't have any regrets other than just maybe uh, shutting the pie hole sometimes because sometimes you know I have an Italian background. I have a hard time, you know. <laughs> holding back. Um, but I do uh, notice that that does have a lot to do with, there's some practical tips in the book that say like, hey, don't be what they call that parent. Well, that's who, uh, and that's one of my questions. Yeah. How do you not be that parent? What's wh- how, What are the practical tips? Give us just a few. Give us a taste. How, do you, how okay. can you not be that one that everybody makes fun of looking at the, oh, yeah. whatever, the sports podcasters and all that? Uh, tell me more. Oh, the memes are endless. And, and there's always someone that just gives everyone a bad name. But honestly, I think one of the most challenging times is when, let's say, a, a kid gets cut uh, from mm-hmm. a team that you're on and maybe your kid was the one that replaced them. Okay. And, um, that can be challenging because you'll hear that parent, um, go through a emotional, just download of what's unfair and unjust or perhaps political or, you know, sadistic or whatever it is that they believe happened, um, is to not lean into that. You kind of have to turn into, 
um, there's a psychological therapist that says something like the gray rock approach where you just show no emotion and just sort of slightly care, but not let them, you don't want to become part of that uh, tumultuous reaction to things. And really it's all about controlling your reactions because yeah. sometimes things do, you see your kid get flattened on the ice and you want to go after somebody, you don't know who, but you want to go after someone. And it's really important that you don't let your emotions get the best of you. And that's easier said than done. And I think right. in physical contact sports, especially, um, you, you know, you almost want to like go slap the parent who's the parent of that kid, but you can't do that. You know, they got to play the game. It's what you yeah. signed up for. So there's plenty of situations where you have to shut your mouth, but then there's also times where you might have to step up and say something. If you think that there's emotional or physical abuse going on, I didn't personally experience the links of that as a parent, no, but, but for sure, plenty it, of people do. Yeah. Yeah, there's times when you when you when you've got to do it. I think that people who want to draw you into their own BS and and mm -hmm. pull you into that, it, of all the places you're going to run into it, and the emotions that come into, like you say, having your child out there, much mm -hmm. more so than 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 the rest of us at work, right? Somebody attacks your proposal for something at work, and you go, that guy's a dick or whatever, right? Right. But it, it somebody. Somebody says some comment that you overhear about your child's performance down there. Mm -hmm. it, it's 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 on. Like uh, to, just watch out. Somebody's going to shank you in the parking lot, right? That that's I can oh. just see how that stuff is going to go. Especially oh, yeah. like like you say with with physical contact sports. So part of the the balance, yes, 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 is is being able to withdraw one step, just that one step of they're having a moment. They need to have their moment. I am not going to sink to that level. I'm not going to go right. down there. We're just we're gonna we're gonna play this game, whether they're playing it fairly or not. We're gonna be fair. We're going to do it honestly or whatever it is that we're doing, and 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 yes. follow the rules and whatever we need to do. Yes. I have so one I more mean, acronym for you as well, and this one comes into play when you feel your child, and this is called hockey parent syndrome. I'm sure you could insert any sport into that. Is when you think your kid is getting the short end of the stick because the coaches have made decisions that there's something that you need to do that's different, and um, it's called wait, which is why am I talking? Um, <laughs> and that's just a Buddhist. Uh, or let's say I've used it in my yoga classes um, and you just have to stop because it may not be your uh, perception that's clear headed anyway, because you have situations where a coach is making a decision what's best for the team. And, and there is nothing insidious about it. It's just you believe there is something, you know, maybe your kid said right. something stupid out loud and the coach is punishing them. Or maybe right. your kid's just not having it that day. You know? Well, the, and there's so many things, and we never know what's going on quite in somebody else's mind or brain or or why they've made things. And we like to believe, as as I'm sure parents do about their children, that we're all having something special or different that nobody's had right. before or that it's something personal about us and not see the, well, they're trying to, this is their goal. This is their agenda. This is their, their thing. They've got to make a decision that's, like you say, best for the team and, and those right. kinds of things. So, I mean, I, what, I, what, there's a little bit more that I want to talk about, but I don't sure. want to dwell on, 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 on negative things. I, I'm curious when, when it came to your kids and, and where you see the desire coming from, where where is this strong desire to to participate in competitive sports to do all this? Is it coming from the kids, or is it coming more from the parents? Because there's there's got to be a time when the kids sitting there going, "I don't want to get up today," or "I don't want to uh, do these things." And how right. much do you push, and how much do you back away? These are all perennial yeah. parenting questions, but. I can honestly say that I, I didn't see it coming. Uh, so I have four children and my two older boys were uh, just regular athletes, meaning that they joined sports uh, at young ages, played uh, in high school, uh, but they had other interests. They diversified their interests. They had jobs in high school. They went to parties, they went skiing. You know, they had other things uh, that they did that were, let's say, balanced um, with the sport <laughs> and um, and I loved it because I could skip a game. And then it was kid number three that I never had to wake up or tell him what to do. He did it for himself. And there was very little uh, pushing 
I mean, there were times where it was more of a struggle to get him to eat the right foods uh, yeah. for the energy that he needed to sustain the weight because it is so physically taxing. And, and that was my biggest thing. I felt like I had a toddler, like you have to eat the brown rice and the chicken. It's what they say you're supposed to have. But, um, and then my daughter, who is the youngest, is a competitive dancer and she's the same way. And the only reason I think I have for this is that I was home with those two kids. Um, I work full time with my older kids. Like they were daycare babies, um, gone 12 hours a day. <laughs> Maybe right. less parenting and influence. So I might own part of that, but I will say that it's all about encouraging. Um, and then there are times where, you have to kind of let them figure it out and and they do and, and and there is i think of anything i would say is this too much do you think this is too much like more of the casting of a doubt and and that's just right. from my legal background you always go through what's the worst case scenario you know and you you kind of like throw that out not as a dream crusher but just as like be logical about this so right. um, that's my personal experience but i have seen plenty of hovering fathers and and, and crazy moms that are definitely pushing those kids. And in some cases it does work out. Uh, they do go on to college or whatever, but in others, there's some resentment there that I think is actually probably bad in the yeah. long run. Yeah, you know? I think that, well, that's, and of course, when, when it comes to any of these things, when, when it's so much driven by the parent and less by mm -hmm. the child, right. I think the, right. the possibility is, or the probability is that the kid will, one, end up resenting the parent a little bit, Two yes. will will be helpless once that push is not there anymore. Right. Once that mm -hmm. external push is gone, when they get to college and there's nobody saying, "You you got to study or you got to do this or you got to do that," you got to you know chop chop. Let's go. That right. that that it actually does them a disservice as far as leading functional and happy lives later. <laughs> But, you know, Correct. back in the day, I mean, long ago, 100 years ago, parents barely knew what their kids were doing. Their kids were out playing. Right. They were doing whatever. They they went off and they were just kind of independent things. And and, and the right. parent was there like, no, you know, go do your stuff. And, and, and here's your here's your, your stuff. And if you figure it out and you get in trouble, then we're going to have a conversation. But otherwise, just, you know, go off. Do your thing. Come on. Oh, I, I talk about the Gen X because I'm 1970 you know, Gen X baby. And yes, how we didn't have cell phones, we would wait for sometimes 30 minutes to an hour for a friend or a person to pick you up. And it was just sort of <laughs> accepted practice. Now it's like you can track your kids' whereabouts, you know exactly what's going on. There's this, you know, fear all the time of where are they? What are they doing? Who are they playing with? Or who are they hanging out with? But I guess the nice thing about sports is that it does keep them off their phones more than maybe the average kid. And I truly think that the physical and emotional and social um, well-being is attributed. And we lived through the pandemic with, right. with hockey. And, and while everyone else was locked down, these kids still played. And it was careless. And at the same time, it was probably the best thing that could have happened. Because those kids did not experience that loneliness and disconnectedness and and all of that. Um, and half the parents were like, this is wrong. And the other half were like, let them play, you know, like, this is all they got. So there is some, you know, strange behaviors that happen mm -hmm. in the years 2020 to 2022 um, that maybe aren't typical, that our stories might be a little different. But I guess the whole point of, of, the book and, and just sort of a commentary on what we're talking about is that we do have to do the best we can as parents and and put some guardrails up and, and find the humor yeah. and the ridiculousness of it. And it's okay to, and I know this is going to sound wrong, but it's okay to not be happy when the team loses if your kid didn't play, you know, <laughs> things that we don't like to articulate out loud because you sound like a jerk. But I put it in the book anyway, so that people can say, you know what, this is a little silly, you know, and, right. and it all works out. The kids lead. If you let the kid lead, they generally speaking, make the right decision for them. Um, but I just like to throw in a lot of, you know, funny stories and things that um, pad it for the parent that might not see the end of the tunnel. Yeah. You know? 
For sure. For sure. So we're kind of coming to the end, but I have questions I like to ask everybody. And the first of which sure. is, what is the biggest fallacy you feel like everybody buys into, but that turns out to be total BS in the end? Now, this can be broad as far as the whole world, or it can be specific to your individual subject. What do you think is way overrated? Oof. I would say that the dream uh, is feasible and stay on the sunny side of life because you will get a lot of people that tell you otherwise. They will be the naysayers that say um, you're never going to make it or everyone goes to the beer league or whatever. And that can be the worst thing that can happen when you're in the throes of it, that it is possible. And it and def defining success is something different for everyone. So I think the fallacy is that we put this big summit of the mountain is only if you make it, is it worth it? And right. the answer is you can learn a lot from the kids that are on their way down. Right. And, and that is the sunny side optimistic. And that's why I gravitate to humor because well, I don't think that it should be that serious. Yeah. And I think there's a, when, when people just focus on whether you made it or didn't, Mm -hmm. They forget that life is about the journey, not the destination. So Correct. if you spend all of your time, say, your weekends out gardening and planting your rose bushes, and then you realize you never looked at them once you were done, was that a waste of time? You go, now, actually, I, I, I really enjoyed the gardening process. I loved planting the seeds or, you know, you don't plant rose bush seeds, but whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, but I enjoyed it. Right. I, I enjoyed the process. It's about the process. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. They're enjoying what they're doing. And and hopefully you're enjoying it as a parent, too. So on the other Correct. side of that, what do you think is the most underrated concept that people overlook? What are we all missing? Uh, the friendships and the relationships that are the result of all of those days spent together. And an example of this is I just went on a little getaway to a cabin with a bunch of hockey moms this weekend. Well, there you go. I mean, it's like, I think yeah. the, 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 the community and finding community. Mm -hmm. what, what, whatever it is, uh, kinship, fellowship, brotherhood, sisterhood in the other people who are going through the same thing you are is the right. way that, that communities form and lifelong lasting lifelong. friendships don't turn yeah. your absolutely do not turn away from those things, nourish those, those kinds of relationships, find them, seek them out. Laura, thank you yeah. so much for joining me, folks. If you thank want to you. know more about Laura, check out her website, buy her book. We're not here for the hockey available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble and Goodreads and follow her on Facebook and Instagram links to everything are in the show notes as always. And until next time, I'm Andrew Wallace and we don't have a problem. We've got an opportunity.